These robots work 24-7, making a core component used in commercial printers for the Silicon Valley-based company HP. We put two robot arms here, and both arms basically emulate a human hand and human motion. This factory is in Singapore. The country ranks second in the world for the number of robots that are deployed for every 10,000 employees. The city-state's embrace of automation has helped keep at bay many of the economic challenges that the world is grappling with right now, from high inflation to supply chain delays and labor shortages. Automation can help with rising business costs, both in the short term and, and the medium term. So we visited the HP factory in Singapore to unpack the benefits and risks of automating many manufacturing processes with high-tech robots. What you see here is a machine that is basically going to peel off an adhesive tape that's sticking onto a part right now. Tangling Feng is the director of ink cartridge operations for HP. The company opened this robotic manufacturing facility in 2017, making print heads that dispense ink from cartridges. The origin of these advanced robots dates back to the 1960s. A robot for industry. Back then, robotic arms were simpler, mainly used to assist with heavy lifting. Then in the following decades, they became more advanced, moving in one or two directions and programmed to perform repetitive tasks. Today, HP has deployed alongside some of the traditional robots, these newer robotic arms that are more intelligent. They're what the industry calls collaborative robots or cobots. What cobots have changed is it literally emulates a human function. You have fine degrees of freedom that you, only a human hand can do. This dexterity allows the arms to take on more complex tasks with higher precision and work 24 hours a day. HP says it's been able to shrink its workforce so the manufacturing line has more robots than people. Tang says the company has been able to retrain its staff, who now take on more high-value jobs and work with robots. For instance, if a production line stops, the employee investigates mechanical problems. So if you imagine cobots are doing most of the physical work, the employees on the line are there to help to monitor. And other staff verify parts rejected by robots. This helps train the algorithm to better inspect cartridges for defects. The company says since installing its robotic manufacturing lines in Singapore, production costs have gone down by 20%. That kind of savings is important. As the world deals with inflation, especially for countries like the US, where the rate has remained stubbornly high. We've seen extraordinarily high inflationary pressures. James Lambert is with Oxford Economics, a global research firm that provides analysis of the world economy. And he's been watching the impact of automation for about a decade. There have been some unpredictable impacts on price levels that are happening this year. Those unpredictable factors include the lingering impact of the pandemic and the war in Ukraine, which has driven up the price of energy and raw materials. In this inflationary context, automation is a solution for reducing operational costs and creating a cost-effective production chain that leads to cheaper prices for consumers. An efficient production line is also about not running short of parts. Many companies are dealing with a global supply chain crisis where components have gotten stuck at ports and suppliers can't deliver them on time. So HP is trying to tackle that problem with automation too by integrating these 3D printers. What we've done is we've been able to convert this part, which is metal, and it had to be manufactured as a supply and sent in to a 3D printed part. Tang says this method allows the company to bring the supply chain closer to home and print parts on demand. That was especially critical during the pandemic when border closures and supply chain backups hit its production capability. But it's not easy to build a factory like HP. Automation requires large-scale, upfront capital investment, not just in the machinery, but also it often requires a skills transition within the workforce. And that's where the government comes in. Since about two decades ago, Singapore has identified advanced manufacturing as a priority. And in 2016, the city-state introduced incentives like tax breaks for highly automated factories. The government is also facilitating research partnerships with universities and subsidizing programs that retrain workers. Singapore government has been really supportive. They've helped to fund this um, center that we are sitting in. Economists say Singapore's push to automate can be inspirational, since it's a rare example of a wealthy country to reverse a manufacturing downturn. But Lambert says this model may not be easy to replicate everywhere. There is a, a limit to how much a, a continental-sized economy like the US with such a diverse manufacturing base can learn from a, a small, localized, focused city-state economy like Singapore. For instance, Singapore's population of 5.5 million has long relied on migrant labor to take on manufacturing jobs. 
so the pain of transitioning to a highly automated economy has largely fallen on foreign visa holders who head back to their countries after their jobs disappear. But for a populous country like the U.S., automating away jobs has faced pushback from unions, politicians, and displaced employees. The political pain that comes along with the social costs of, of displacing workers from manufacturing jobs can be much higher. Economists say moving in a sharper direction like Singapore can be an uphill battle, and one of the keys to a smooth transition will be taking care of the human labor force. It's going to be invest in your people, really look at how do you upskill your employees, equip them with the knowledge first, but more importantly, encourage that mindset shift.